Hi, my name is Jason Van Brackle. This is Getting Started with Zarf, recorded in November 2022 with Zarf version 0.22.2. So know if you're just watching this in the future, features may change a little bit. Um, we'll try to keep these videos up to date so that you have new video versions for new versions of Zarf. So first and foremost today, okay, here's our overview for today. First, we're gonna talk about dependencies for getting this up and running. Uh, these are not specific to Zarf, but specific to this process. Next, we'll do the quick and fun way of installing Zarf. If you're doing this in an air gap situation or a highly secured situation, this doesn't apply to you. This is for getting you as a developer up and running. Next, we'll create our first package in Zarf. We'll run it. And then I'll show you some contact information for how to get a hold of us uh, as you work with Zarf. So let's get started. We're going to navigate to Zarf.dev. You'll see here on Zarf.dev, right here is an install now. So let's talk about a couple of the prerequisites you'll need. Uh, here you can see the brew tab. So you're gonna want brew. You can go to uh, you can go to brew.sh. That takes you to homebrew. Now homebrew does have its own prerequisites. Uh, the big one is Git. So you need uh, Git available. Um, most developers, this would be a you know going to homebrew and doing the install. It's just gonna work. Now I already have homebrew installed. I'll let you run this yourself. Go ahead and pause this, get homebrew up and running, and then come on back. All right, we're back to the Zarf. We're back to the Zarf uh, .dev page. Uh, we're going to install. We're going to install Zarf here. You can see the brew tap and the brew install. So this actually tells Homebrew to go look into our Git repository and to grab the Defense Unicorns tap and then does the install of Zarf. So we're actually just gonna copy this and put it right in our terminal window and it will be running then. All right, we have our terminal, let's go. Let's paste our command in. Brew tap defense unicorns tap, brew install Zarf. And in just a moment, we'll have Zarf installed. I'll fast forward this if it takes a little while, just for your time. Okay, we now have Zarf installed. If you ever want to look at the version of Zarf that you're using, you can go to Zarf version. And you can see here I have version 0.22.2 as mentioned in the slides before. So let's create our first Zarf packet. So as I mentioned before, you're all good, you're going to want Docker installed. If you need to go get Docker, if you haven't used it yet, go in your web browser and just go to docker.com. You can go here, download Docker Desktop. You'll have Docker running on your machine, so you can do this. I'm also going to use a Kubernetes distribution that is uh, quick and easy for developers, and it's called K3D. So it's k3d.io. This is K3s in Docker. So Rancher created a small distribution called K3s. They donated it to CNCF. This is K3s in Docker. So it's a minimal K, K3 setup to run in Docker aimed at uh, developer scenarios like we're doing today. If you want to get familiar with K K3s, it's just k3s.il. So if you're on a Linux machine, you can actually use this to stand up your own K3 server. Because I'm on a Mac machine, I can run K3s inside of Docker and it works just fine. So I've already, I've already installed K3s. Um, I believe it's available in Brew. Uh, you can do a Brew install K3D. But once you have that, you can go K3D clusters create. Oh, I already had a I already had a cluster set up. So I'm going to quickly delete this cluster and then create a new one. And I will fast forward through the minute or so it takes to create the cluster. Okay. We now have a K3D cluster running in Docker. We can actually check that it's working with kubectl, get nodes, and to see the node running. Oh, if you're working with Kubernetes, you need kubectl. So just make sure that's also, you can install that through brew with a brew install kubectl. It'll tell me I already have it, but just to show you that it does indeed work. Oh. It'll probably just do an upgrade. Yep. 
have been installed. So yeah, I I had installed it earlier. <laughs> it just copied over itself. Hopefully I didn't break it. Let's find out. Nope, oh, everything's working fine. Good. So we have Zarf now. We have a Kubernetes cluster. Let's get Zarf initialized. So you're going to use the uh, Zarf init command. In this case, again, we're in a development scenario, so we're just download our init file off the internet. So I'm going to go Zarf init. So Zarf is 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 built with a bunch of components. In this case, we have um, here. I walks and go slowly through this. So Zarf packages, and this is an init package, are defined by Zarf configs. So we can see here we have the init, um, who built it, when it was built, and then each individual component. Components can be Helm charts, they can be Kubernetes manifests, they can be binary files, they can be data injection, they could just be you know, straight up scripts. So we have different component types. So these are the various components that make up Zarf. So we have the Zarf injector. This actually injects Zarf into your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, various files that are part of that injector. Helm charts for C registry. A Docker registry to put images um, in, you know, to put the images from the Zarf package into your cluster and to maintain their state over time. Zarf also supports external registries and external Git, ser um, external Git uh, servers, Git servers. And then we have also the manifest like the Zarf Connect we talked about earlier, no scripts, a few charts, and images for that component. Some of these are required, some of these are optional, and optional ones, it's gonna ask me about these various uh, various components. So we'd see here, we're gonna deploy, oh, one thing of note. Um, this includes, uh, this. there was a SBOM, that's Secure Bill of Materials included. Um, I've talked about Secure Bill of Materials in a previous video in a Zarf Online Meetup. Uh, you can go back through the Zarf playlist on the, Zarf, on the YouTube channel to go watch that. So we're gonna deploy. And we're not going to install any optional components today. We'll, uh, well, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll skip the Git server, and this will actually do the do the initialization of Zarf in the cluster. This will take a moment. Again, I'll fast forward to save you some time. Zarf is now installed in our Kubernetes cluster. We, have, we can access the registry from the outside world with that Zarf Connect registry. Uh, we'll talk about Zarf Connect in a, in, a late, in a later video. So now that we have Zarf installed, uh, let's actually do our first, you know, grab our first package. So let's grab some example files. We can get this uh, from, the, uh, from the Zarf uh, GitHub registry. So I'm gonna open my browser, navigate, the Zarf, or sorry, to GitHub. Attention to corner Zarf. We're gonna grab our Git repo, and I'm just gonna clone it right here for ease of use. So we'll get into the Zarf directory, and we're gonna navigate to the examples. And we'll go into a quick one called game. This is a very simple one. Uh, it installs some games in a DOS box in a browser into your cluster. And it's a good, easy example. So if we take a look at this folder, you can see here we have, um, you know what, let's do it this way. You can see here we have the readme file, which is for GitHub. We have the container image itself. So if we... Uh, you can see here with a Docker file and an index. So if we look at that Docker file itself, you can see here it's a pretty simple Docker file that downloads a set of games, uses, uses an Alpine image, and has our index file, which is just our list of games that will be used when this runs. Then in our Manifest directory. 
we have our deployment and our services. These are the Kubernetes deployment and service that will be used to deploy these into Kubernetes. And if we look at the ZAR file itself, the ZAR file is very simple for this. It's a nice, easy getting started. You can see here we have DOS games. Uh, we have a component, which is just the baseline component. That's just what we call it. It is required. It has manifests and files for those manifests and the image that we talked about with a specific tag. So I'm going to create this package. I'm going to do a zarf package create from my current directory. So it's going to grab the zarf.yaml file from my current directory and it will ask me, do I want to actually build this? And I'm going to say yes. So zarf is now compiling all the components for this package, um, the manifests, the Docker images, building things and creating an SBOM. So again, that's that our software build materials that tells us everything that goes in um, to this uh, to this specific package. Understand we can use our software build materials to do policy down the road. Again, watch the SBOM video I did at an earlier date. So in an air gap scenario, we might take this ZARF package, roll it on a USB stick, a hard drive, send it over to the internet, you know, send it over some sort of air gap via the mail um, to go into a secure facility or something that is just not connected to the internet, which is why we have this. So in the, in the air gap scenario, we'd have this ZARF binary installed in that other area. We'd bring our package over and we'd have our Kubernetes cluster sitting there with ZARF already edited onto it. So to then install a package, we're going to do a zarf package deploy and the name of the zarf package. Again, it's going to tell us all about the package, look over it, make sure everything looks like it looks kosher. And then we're going to say deploy the package. Yes. And it's going to do the deployment of the package. And here again, we have Zarf Connect, and it tells us how to connect to um, the web page that we that we have running inside the Kubernetes cluster. And we're going to do a Zarf Connect games. We have our list of games. Let's go ahead and launch Doom for fun. And just like that, we now have Doom. I'm going to exit just for your time. And just like that, we've, we've created and deployed our first ZARF package. So if you want to get a hold of me for any questions, ideas, bugs you run into, feel free to do so. I'm out of the Kubernetes Slack. I am at JVB. I'm on Twitter, Jason Van Brackle, and I'm on Twitch. So when I'm prepping new ideas for videos or I'm trying out a new integration, I'll probably do it live. Uh, just to build, you know, build some community, get your feedback, answer questions while I'm working. If you want to get a hold of the team, zarf.dev, as I mentioned before, github.com slash defense unicorns slash zarf. Um, there's also a zarf channel in the Kubernetes Slack uh, workspace. And then if you want to get a hold of defense, defense unicorns, feel free to reach us out, reach out to us on, on Twitter and on LinkedIn. We're very active as well. And with that, Thank you so much for your time. Happy surfing. See you in the next video. Bye now.